What's up guys, welcome back. West Texas Hunting Guys here. Uh, we're gonna do a quick tutorial video today on how to do um, an easy but quality Euro mount um, on a couple deer. Yeah, we've got uh, a, a whitetail and an axis from last season, so excited to show you guys uh, some of the things that our pro Brandon here does for a uh, Euro mount. So. so step by step, we'll go through how to do this super cheap, super effective, um, but a good job on it. So stay tuned and we'll go from there. All right, so step one is we have to just get all the, as much of the flesh and meat and hide and everything off the skull as we can. So we're gonna start out, just get these heads fleshed out. All right, so once we get to this point where most everything is cut off, um, there's still gonna be you know, pieces of, of flesh around, but you wanna get as much off as you can, get that bottom jaw off, um, uh, you know, just get that cut off. Our next step is we're gonna put it and we're gonna boil it in some uh, uh, water here with a little Dawn dish soap for about 15, 20 minutes, um, and then we're gonna start cleaning that off again. What that Dawn dish soap is gonna do is just really cut the grease on that spool lift off a lot of that grease in the back. Alright, so these have been going for about 20 minutes and they're ready to get pulled out. Um, as you can see, they're obviously not pretty, but they have uh, done what needs to be done, so we're going to take them over there to get them power washed. So it makes it a lot easier if you have a power washer. Um, you can do it a different way, but we just use um, this little electric Ryobi 1600 PSI power washer um, to really get in all the nooks and crannies of, of getting this deer cleaned up. Go. Power. All right, so uh, we've we've power washed um, the big chunks off of the main part that we're going to be uh, cleaning up here. There is um, still a lot in here, like like the eyes, nasal cavity, brains, and things like that. I'm going to go in now and do some trimming around just to get some of those other big chunks out. Um, we'll do one more boil and then power wash again. All right, the second boil is done. Um, now we're gonna go off and just do a real fine power wash over the whole thing now.
Once we've uh, done another power wash, now we're going to go in with some needle nose pliers and try to get out all the cartilage, things like that. Um, it's a good time also to pop out those eardrums. You just put the hole in there, kind of pop it out, and that'll help all that all that brain brain matter to pop, pop out and come out a lot easier. There we go. All right, so we're done with the power washing. We're done with picking out all the little um, bits and pieces. One thing that's important to note is that whenever you're doing this, look in every little nook and cranny. Look inside the brain cavity, look inside the eyes, the nasal cavity. Make sure every little piece is out because if it's not, it's just gonna be stinky and gross. Um, now that it is all cleaned up, what we're gonna do is start the bleaching process. Um, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, one really popular way to do this is to get the Salon 40 uh, developer cream, which you can get this at any like hair salon place for really cheap. Um, this big thing here was like 10 bucks, I think, and has lasted me a couple of years. Um, but you can put that in the water and boil it. Uh, if you're going to do, do that, make sure you're wrapping the base of these antlers with um, usually like a, a uh, cellophane, like a saran wrap, and then uh, holding that on there with some like electrical tape because um, you don't want it to bleach these antlers. Um, that's one way you can do it is boil it in there. A lot of people have success with that. Personally, the way I like to do it is I actually put this whole thing um, into a container like this and I just paint that developer all over that, which I'll show you right now. So the reason I do it this way is because I feel like I can get that, that developer in all the little nooks and crannies really well, and it also is a lot more concentrated. Um, I've heard people say that whenever you do this, if you leave it on too long, it corrodes the skull. Um, I have never had a problem with that. I've left this developer on there for as much as 24 hours, and I've never had any sort of skull degradation or anything like that, so um, I do this and then I hang it up. So here's how I do it. So you still do not want to get this developer on the antlers. You can be really careful to have a clean hand, but I'm just gonna kind of pour it on there and just paint it on the whole thing, nice and thick. You can be pretty liberal with this application. All right, so uh, we've painted up all the skulls with that developer. Um, we've went pretty aggressive with it, pretty liberal with it, because what that's gonna do is that's it's gonna get into all those nooks and crannies again. It's also gonna help knock out the smell of anything that's on there. So um, we're gonna put that on there, try to get most of the big globs off, and we're gonna leave this just sitting in direct sun um, until uh, this evening, and then we'll move it inside, move it back outside tomorrow in direct sun, and check on it then. All right guys, so um, these have been sitting out in the sun for about five hours, um, and as you can see, they are, I mean, ghost white. Uh, so this, this process really does work amazing. Um, it doesn't have to be out in the sun for, you know, the full 24 hours or 48 hours, although it can if you want it to. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a little paper towel and just kind of wipe off the leftover big chunks of that, of that peroxide solution. Um, just to kind of clean it up a little bit. At that point, if we happen to find um, any parts that didn't get as white as we would like, we can always repeat the process. Um, so we've got everything wiped off, um, all the developer cream out of the insides, the nooks and crannies, and honestly, they turned out amazing. They're just, just snow white. Um, we did a good job of not getting it on the antlers, but if you do, uh, 
there's a fix you can do. So um, you can take this this uh, uh, little wood stain. This is a poly shade stain and polyurethane. Um, the classic oak gloss is what I found that is kind of the best shade. If you go too dark, it just looks unnatural. But what you want to do with this classic oak um, stain is just get this on a rag and kind of lightly go over the places that you might have uh, spotted or if you just want an overall darker feel to your antlers, go over in multiple layers of light shades. Uh, you don't want to go real heavy on it. Don't start at the top. Um, as you know, deer tend to be a little lighter on top because they're rubbing against brush and stuff like that. So I usually start at the bases and kind of work up lightly in multiple light layers. So um, that's one option you can do. But again, you can leave it natural as well. And I think they turned out really good. All right, guys, so that's it. That's how to do your own DIY Euro mount. Um, again, I think they turned out really great. Both these deer are deer that were in the freezer for almost a full year and had a chance for all that to like set into their bone. Um, and it came right out with this method. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them down in the comments below um, and we'll try to respond to you. If you have any other ideas that work good, also put those in the comments below. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe to us and follow us on Instagram at West Texas Hunting Guys. And we'll see you next time.